Hi, this is John and Steve from Midlands Metalheads, and today we're speaking with Mike from I Am The Manic Whale. He is the Manic Whale. Hello, I am the Manic Whale. Yeah? <laughs> How manic are you? Yeah. Very. On a scale of 1 to 10, 9.8. 9.8. Oh, wow. Yeah. Is there any occasions where it like slips up a bit further than that? Not careful. Sometimes no. it goes over the edge. Oh, you better be careful. Yeah, yeah. So don't... Because I've noticed line. your uh, Facebook tag is Manic Whale. That's right. Yeah. yeah. You have to abbreviate it. Yes, yeah. It's a bit long to have in the uh, <laughs> Facebook URL. Yeah. And... I'm I'm intrigued personally. Um, uh, here, here we have uh, this is the Prog Jedi on mm. the Prog Padawan, so I'm learning nice. about a lot of new new bands here. Um, and uh, this is the first time that I've listened to it. I just love the name. So mm. just just for me, sake of curiosity, why the name? How did it come about? Um, so it's actually an anagram of my name, Michael Whiteman. I am the Manic Whale. Um, so when I started the project, it was just me. It's a solo thing. Um, and it was like a studio project, it was never going to play live. I was going to write a bunch of songs, record my own CD, make a hundred copies and give them to friends and that was it. Oh wow. And uh, I gradually got some other friends involved in playing on the CD as well. Can you come and do a guest keyboard solo? Can you come and do a guest guitar solo? They ended up playing on the whole album and I got rid of a hundred copies and people wanted more. So I got more done and it just kind of grew from there. But I had no idea that we'd be playing, you know, festivals. Yeah. Three years after it's that. It's a bit like Stephen Wilson, and he started out like that. Yeah. You know, look at him there. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, if you do well. something right, you better carry on doing mm. it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so how long have you been going? So uh, about three <coughs> years in this form, but I've known um, Dave, the guitarist, and Ben, the drummer, for 20 years. Long time. I was at secondary school with Dave, um, and I met Ben soon after that. John, the keyboard player, I've only known for five or six years. Um, but yeah, so... The, the, this format of these these musicians is is new, but I've played in bands with both Ben and Dave before, quite a bit. And did you find that you gel well together? Yeah, yes. I mean, Dave Dave was my best man, and I was his best man, and we you know we know each other since school, so we're we're very good friends, and that really helps I think with the band dynamic and uh, making it all work. Because just imagine, obviously doing it all yourself initially, it must have been a bit of a challenge to find musicians to sort of bring that to fruition. That's know? right, yeah. I started off with one song, which is called Open Your Eyes, which we played today, actually. And uh, I played everything on it, and then it needed a guitar solo, and I, I can play guitar a bit, but it's not my main thing. So I had to get Dave, because you know, I've played with him before, to come and guest on that. And that's, yeah, just kind of grew from there. Well, have things evolved <coughs> in terms of, obviously, when it started, it was just you, the composition, the ideas, everything was just you. Now you've got all these, these other creative individuals That's involved. Right. Has, has it evolved the writing process as well? It has, yeah. The first album was entirely written by me. Uh, the second album, which is Gathering the Waters, which is just about a year old now, John wrote a song on that and contributed lots of ideas uh, to the other songs. And now we're, we've started work on our third album already and, and Dave's come up with some, some songs for that as well. So it's much more of a collaborative thing uh, than it used to be. I'm a bit of a control freak, so it's... Ah, I'm, I'm probably similar to yeah. the endeavours I've been involved in, it's a case of letting that go. Sometimes it's yeah. a bit of a challenge yeah. to let <laughs> <everyone> <laughs> have their input. But no, let go of the mouse, let go of the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> so do you, yes. do you do all the writing? Most of the writing, I think yeah. that would be fair to say. Um, but the songs evolve. I, I make demos in my little home studio and send those to the band, and they come up with ideas, and as they get recorded, they kind of evolve a bit, and the others have creative input as well but you know there's sort of the the bones of the song the, the lyrics and the melodies and the harmonies are, are mostly mostly me because uh one thing i've noticed with your music it's got like a to me it's got like a, an american edge to it it's mm -hmm. it's very similar to a lot of the american prog bands so i think what, what would i mean we're i'm very inspired by spock's beer for instance but i yes. think they in turn were very inspired by bands like genesis and yes so I think it kind of comes full circle, really. Genesis and Yes are, are bands I really like as well. Um, yeah, so a bit of American, a bit of English, I think. A bit of everything. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, have you ever been tempted to do an epic? The, the first album closes with a 22-minute song about a derelict swimming pool. Okay. So <laughs> that's, that's fairly epic. Um, and there's quite a long song on the, uh, the second album as well called Stand Up, which John wrote which is 15 or 16 minutes, so there's some vaguely epic things. Have you uh, ever recorded the one about the Devil Extreme pool? Have you ever done it live? We have, yes, a couple of times. We did it at a, we got invited to play 
I think it was just about our first ever gig, a festival called Danfest in Leicester. Oh, I know Danfest. You know Danfest. Yeah, we'd, yeah. Only been, <coughs> we'd only been to playing live for months, a matter of months rehearsing together. We'd finished the first CD, uh, which Danny had heard, and, and he liked it, and he wanted to get us down. And we, yeah, we played Derelict, which is this song about the swimming pool, at that. And uh, yeah, people seem to like it. I think you know, there's uh, a moment in your career that at some point you've got to play the song about a derelict swimming pool. <laughs> a derelict swimming pool. I would <laughs> love that. I would love. That. I mean, it, the song was actually inspired by um, a story about uh, an urban explorer who breaks into uh, a derelict swimming pool that's part of a big holiday park, actually, a bit like this place. It's not this this holiday camp. And um, the weird thing is, it it's a semi autobiographical story. It, it was me. Um, the swimming pool is is still full of water. It hasn't been used for 20 years, but it runs the sprinkler system for the rest of the building. So they have to keep all the pumps and filters and everything running. So you go in this place at night and there's there's fountains and there's jacuzzis bubbling, uh, but, it's, but the pool is full of shopping trolleys and just rubbish that people have dumped in there. It's a really eerie, strange place. Yeah. And that's what inspired me to, to write that song. Because I was going to say, because it's uh, quite a, a subject <laughs> to stretch out over 23 yes, minutes. Yes, yeah, yeah. I, I like to try and write about things that no one else is writing about. Well, that's certainly I think you're succeeding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So, so what are some of the topics that you're covering on the new album? Then? Give us some um, examples. So we've got a song inspired by science fiction. It's kind of about uh, Doctor Who, uh, but it's written from the point of view of Dalek. So that's, that's quite okay. an unusual one. We've got a song about uh, volunteer lifeboat men, uh, inspired by a man called Henry Blogg, who won lots of awards for being uh, for saving loads of people at sea in the 1940s or 50s. Uh, we've got a song about strand beasts. Have you heard of strand beasts? They're large mechanical structures built by this um, Dutch artist and engineer, uh, Theo Janssen is his name, and they they're powered by wind. They're huge, great things. When the wind blows on the beach, they, they're on the beaches. And they they fill up with sails and they crawl along, all, all powered by wind. And they're really strange things to look at. The way they move is really kind of weird and hypnotic. So we wrote a, a thirty minute epic about those, of course, as you would. So yeah, we yeah, unusual and interesting things. Uh, what we try. So and, whatever captured you, imagine. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And so like do, you, do you try and sort of uh, seek out subject matter that other people may have overlooked mm. to try and be as original as possible. That's it. Yeah. And, uh, the, uh, several of our songs have actually come up from uh, browsing on Facebook and a suggested Wikipedia article comes up and I think, well, that looks interesting, I'll, I'll give that a read and then I've read the article ten minutes later, I've got to write a song about that and that's where the, <laughs> the Lifeboat song uh, came from that. Yeah. Excellent. Have you got a working title for the new album? Just Manic Well 3 at the moment, well, we'll, it won't, that won't be its title at the moment. That's what we're uh, and when are you looking to release it? So we've got, yeah, eight songs demoed and we've got some studio time booked in January to start recording it. I, I'm, I'm not really sure. It might be, we might get it done in 2019, probably more likely to be early 2020 when we get it out. They it's always seem ready to take, when it's ready. Yeah, well, yeah. they always seem to end up taking longer than, than you think. And, uh, you know, we all have full lives and jobs and things as well to contend with, but we'll get there. And do you play any of the new songs live yet? No, no, we've not tried anything live from that. Do you do? Do you actually, when you you know put an album together, do you ever sort of screen test a particular track in front of a live audience to see what the feedback is, and then maybe modify it based mm. on feedback? Mm. There's n most of the songs get recorded before we play them live, but there there's one or two that we have tried out live first, um, and then then recorded. And will we be hearing any of these at Fusion next year? Yes, I, I, I don't know actually. I hope we can learn some of the stuff from the new uh, new record before we uh, before we come to fusion. I don't know. It depends how depends how things go. Excellent, excellent. Mike, it's been absolutely brilliant having you on board. Thanks Thank very you very much. much for taking time out to come and speak with us. No problem. And uh, we look forward to Manic Whale Three whenever it appears. And it's extremely uh, strange subject matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, the first thing that I'm going to do after this weekend is go and listen to the song about the swimming pool. Brilliant. I actually need to. <laughs> Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. Cheers, Mike.